Hello to everyone on the line. So my bio is here, so I won't necessarily read that to you, but I will just tell you that my background is that I've been in clinical research for quite some time, four decades actually, and started out in academia. So I've been both at the research site as well as in industry. So I spent 23 years in academic research sites as a coordinator and then a research site manager here in the New York City area and transitioned to industry as a monitor, then became a study manager, worked in the quality arena, and did a host of other things before going independent and doing mainly training now, but quality oversight as well. So that's kind of my quick story. I know I can't see you, but that's, that's me. This is basically going to be covering what the inspection findings have been over the past several years. We seem to see the same things popping up all the time. And looking at ways to maybe prevent that from happening. And we're going to look at it at the site perspective as well as the industry. But for those of you who are CRAs, this is one way to, and study managers actually as well, one way to interact with your site to kind of help them along in terms of if they're having difficulties or if you see that there have been consistent difficulties with informed consent process or the informed consent itself. And then we're going to look at also what do we do, what, what do, we do when we're faced with or when a site is faced with even a finding from, let's say, an FDA inspection or even an audit. If you, you have your own internal auditing department or do you outsource that at auditing? Uh, we have an internal QA department. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this would be another avenue for them as well in terms of if they find these kinds of things, what could be done about correcting them. So that's kind of the focus of what's going to be going on today. So we look at the most common clinical investigator deficiencies when we have FDA inspections. And I do focus mostly on FDA inspections because that's where we have information available. If we're talking about EMA or other agencies, it's more difficult, if not impossible, to get hold of some of those findings. But the FDA findings and the FDA warning letters and that sort of thing are really there on the FDA.gov website, so we're, we're able to access them, and that's why I use those mostly as an example. So everything I'm going to be talking about today really is based on the U.S. findings via the FDA. Okay, so the order in which these have been found, again, has not changed in eight years. In the past, we used to see informed consent as being the number one finding. We're getting better, but not perfect. It's down to number six. But we find that the, the number one top finding is failure to follow the protocol and the regulations. And then protocol deviations follows that, inadequate record keeping, which sometimes includes accountability records as well for, for the uh, device or drug. And then inadequate accountability for investigational product is the number four. And number five is inadequate communication with IRB. But number six is still there in terms of inadequate subject protection or things that concern informed consent. So just a quick chat back here, if using your chat panel, just to, not chat panel, but using your icons, what's the most frequent FDA inspection finding? And if you could just go ahead and click on the icon for that. Great. Okay, the pro well, actually it's the failure to follow the investigational plan. Protocol deviation is number two. Failure to follow the investigational plan is number one. Okay. So possible reasons for noncompliance, what I have found is either it's one of these four things, sometimes a combination of all of the above, lack of time, lack of training. And, you know, we see this all the time when I read monitoring reports. I will see, you know, we'll retrain the site, and it's always training that's coming into play. So sometimes part of it is training. But if we see the same mistake happening over and over again or the same issue popping up over and over again, we need to do something else other than train or retrain. So again, lack of training does factor into that issue. 